Hi guys, welcome back to my UE4 fan spawner. This is uh, part 3 of the tutorial series I'm making on it. In the desc video description you should be able to find a link which will take you to the marketplace where you can purchase it. Now, in part 2 we covered the fan spawner. But when you click, when you do the fan spawner, if you just right click on this and click run, as we'll need this uh, editor widget again. So when we click on this, or sorry, when we clicked on the BP fan spawner and we clicked, there was a button here that said add in chairs. Once we clicked that, it would add this in when we set our desired location. So next part I'm going to go over is the functionality of the fan's BP. Now one of the functionalities is, like in the previous version, you can combine blueprints. So you've got fan BP4 and fan BP2. So if we click on combine blueprints, then we should be able to click on this button and then if we just select our selected one we want to add the chairs to listed BP. So our chairs from this one will get added to this one. Let me click it. Now you'll see it says here you can't add the same actor as it causes a loop better. This is because I added fans BP2 to fans BP2. Now I've any like just to prevent any bugs or that, I've actually made it so it won't do it and it'll like like tell you what the header is. So we select fans BP4 and then just click add chairs to listed blueprint. And as you can see, what it's done is it's added them all to it's added fans BP2 to fans BP4. And now when we click on fans BP4, it's got them all together. 500 chairs. Also you'll notice a 10k performance lock. Now what this does as if we toggle this off, it means that we could, or sorry, if this was on, which it, it defo is by default, you can, or sorry, you can't add more than 10,000 chairs in total. So if you had like 4,000 and 6,000, that'd be okay. But if you have like 5,000 and 7,000, that wouldn't be okay. The reason why I've done this is because anything over 10,000 becomes buggy. So if you had like 100,000 fans, If you had 100,000 fans, you would have 10 of the fans BPs going down the side and each one would have 10,000 fans sort of thing. Which, most kind of events and that, you don't really have more than 100,000 fans. But, I have actually tested it with 1 million fans. And I do have a, a GTX 20, I think that's what it's called. Um, so it does work, it does run very, very well. But again, that is on quite a good, good PC. So the next mode I'm going to show you is the paint chair mode. So we click on this. What this will actually allow us to do is actually engrave, or not engrave, sorry, paint like colors on the chairs or like patterns or art. Or so you do this is you click on the, the paint chair mode. Now it is important to note that changing to another tab or closing the widget will set this to false, not allowing the paint chairs to work. Uh, this is just due to performance, you know, um, paint chair mode, if we had it selected for like multiple things, it would get very, it gets very, very laggy and all that. So just to make it simpler, I just made it so that it would just turn off whenever we done that. And uh, this says, warning, can only turn paint mode on for one BP. That's just what I've explained really. And then, so, oh, also, you cannot have any fan spawn. So if you have, if you, and I'll show you later on how to spawn the fans. If you spawn the fans and the game's playing, and th even if this is ticked, it won't work. Again, it's just due to performance, trying to change the chairs when the fans are behind it and the collisions and all that. It's just a lot easier if the, chair the fans aren't on. So, all we do is we set our starting material. Now, this doesn't really matter. It's just a default colour you can start painting with. But again, we can change it in a second anyway. So, I don't know, just say I want green. So, click, make sure that box is ticked and click play. Now as you can see, we have a cursor here, it gets smaller and bigger. And if we, anything inside the cursor will get painted, so we click it. Now what I've also done, and this took me so long to make by the way, when you zoom in, the cursor gets bigger, so it'll always stay the same size sort of thing. But if we get really far out, it'll still stay the same size as that three chairs. But if we make the brush size down to one, we can actually end up painting individual chairs. 
I mean, I want an E. I don't, you know, I don't know what shape this is going to be. But you can change all your colors here. Custom color. So, you can actually increase the size. Now, I can't remember what percentage it is, but over a certain percentage, it does delay when the seats get spawned in. Now, it's sort of like putting like a queue of a, like an array. And then gets done because it was becoming so laggy, especially if you had like massive stadiums and we were trying to paint over one section that had like 10,000, 30,000 seats in it. So it did become very, very laggy, but you can see, you can put it all up to there. See, in the way it just paints them, paints the spots. So it does work very, very well. Now, once you're done, what you do is you can press escape. Or sorry, before we do that, if you click you can press R sometimes. What I find is occasionally it doesn't come up with like like see how this changes the brush size which changes colour because my mouse has hovered over it. So what you can do is you actually press R and it'll disable the cursor and it'll change to select so you can select stuff or you can press R again just to go back. So yeah, so to save it all you need to do is press escape. And then you notice it's like oh it's just reverted back to the same. But what it does actually is make a save of every chair that you've changed color, and only the ones you change color. If you change it back to a default color, then it won't it won't save it. And then we just need to click update selected chair color. As you can see, that's updated. So you know, like the stadium Wembley. This was the this is the base for Wembley. But if you actually had the seats in it, you know you could play it in the W E M etc. So another cool feature is like for example when you seen in the last video if you watched the last video we actually curved the seats around and made like a nice corner bit super easily but the problem was the, this bit was like filled um, so the best way to remove that or if like you had a tunnel like this the best way to remove that is we click the remove chair button now you'll see if you click the remove chair button even if it's on the same tab it'll just remove it as well it'll Disable it, sorry. The paint chairs mode and vice versa. If you click this one and click this, it'll disable that one, sort of thing. So, you do this, it's just got the same kind of warnings, you know, that if you close it, it'll be disabled, sort of thing. And that you can't do it when the, the fans are spawned. So, it is once it with it enabled, we just click play again. And then it says click on a chair. Sorry about this message, I need to rebuild the lighting, but I'll do it after. Click on a chair to remove it. So. You click on a chair, it'll start removing. Now you just imagine that was like a tunnel, or like this was stairs and the tunnel was there. You know, you can really remove whatever you want to your heart's content. However, we did have a big cursor before, but we're choosing, I chose not to go along with this idea. It was for many reasons, the main one being that it was a lot easier to undo. So you got the Z button to undo. And also I found that removing too much, like the cursor, sorry, was just too sensitive for removing the chairs, you know, like, yeah, like for example, especially with like, if you had chairs in here or like, like that other bit, if you had like one that's piercing through, you use the cursor, it'd be quite like hard, unless you went on like the, the smallest setting. And the cursor, so I just opted to go out with it. It's a lot more accurate, and yeah. So again, you just press Z to undo the chairs, and then escape. Now to update that, all we do is update selected remove chairs. You see, it removes the chairs. Now you might have seen there, which I forgot, again, there's one, there's another bug with the chair colours getting restored. Again, this is another bug that will be getting fixed by the time this comes out. It's just little bugs. And yeah, that's all there is really to it in this section. I will actually show you just now how the fans are spawned. So what we do to spawn the fans is, if this is our, we don't even need to click on it. What we do is we go up to our blueprint and click open level blueprint. 
and then from event begin play we just drag off and do get all actors of class and then we want the fans VP and with that we can just get rid of this and then we can do a for each loop drag the for each loop there then what we're going to do is, as long as it says fans VP, yep. So we'll do spawn fans at random. There we go. Now, if you have a world with like 90,000 fans or something, you, and say like each, each blueprint had 10,000 fans on it, or even 30,000 fans, I find is okay. If you had 30,000 fans on one blueprint, the this thing here is called delay for going off. This is really crucial because Unreal Engine will detect that there's a loop error if you have like like a hundred thousand fans all going off at the same time, like uh looping sort of thing. So the best thing I decide uh notice to do is if you hold shift to put a time sign and int by float. And all you do is Sometimes if you got, when I had 250,000, uh, 250, I just did 0 0.3, but for this I'll just do 0 0.1. You don't even need to do this, especially for the 500 fans I've gotten just now. This is so irrelevant. I'm just doing this as demonstration purposes to show you how to do it. So, constant lights, we'll get onto that later. And full passes, we'll get onto that later too. But for right now, spawn percentage, it's all at 100%. That's why it's got a percentage sign. So, type in 100, press enter, and we can s compile and save. That's our a little bit of code there. Save this. Fans VP. Okay, get rid of this. Do this. Now hopefully, with that saying 100 percent should be able just to click play. In fact, actually, I'm gonna cut the video and I'm gonna super quickly build the lighting for you. Right guys, that's the lighting redone. So what we're going to do now is click play, and hopefully, we now have fans. These are the fans here. They are quite detailed, I'm quite happy with them. However, you know, you'll notice that the tries aren't perfect, and some of their clothes aren't very perfect. But it is quite good for what we've got going on just now. And again, they're here as well, yeah. But th again, this is more for the budget model kind of computers. Version 2, which is coming out next month, before the start of next year will have the same fan models but a lot more detail they look a lot more realistic and also i'm going to add a feature in for example if there's me there and i have a pink top on now this top will be masked and based on per instance it'll have a random color which is going to be very very cool so for example there's a me there and there's a me there these might have like slightly different colors like this one might have a red one this might have one might have an orange one and like certain colors, like again this one, we'll have this top changed. And maybe I might change the shirt. I have a mask and shirt pattern on that and change the colors of it. You know, and I'm just going to, so it'll be a lot more variety in the colors of the shirts and clothes. And like her clothes might be a different color too. So that's how you spawn the fans. But how do you change the animations of the fans? Well, you should go into here and type in material function I think oh. sorry about that material parameter param where are we set scalar parameter value here we are crowd animations parameter name now we have two different types here we've got animation number so we can also set the animation number no nope, let's get scalar parameter we want to set scalar parameter value so about that 
So let's just say we want one, which I think is a clapping animation. Now, in the description of the Unreal Engine, it will have a list of each animation and each number. There also is another thing which I'm going to show you in a sec. If we go change this to mix animations. So it says 1 is equal to true, 0 is equal to false. So right now I'm just going to set this to 0. And we'll click play. And you can see this is for like, for example, I was making a boxing game. So when the fans walk out, I want all the fans to stand up clapping as they make the ring entrance walk out. So this is the kind of animation. Now this one does have a start and a finish, so you can see it starting there, and then the finishing, and then start again. However, if we go, if we change this to zero or two, I can't really remember. We'll just change it to two for the sake, sake of it. Change it to two. I think this one's sit down. So you sit down, start, stop. So each time, like between, so zero, one, and two are all animations of the same thing, so it's all like clapping. But I think number two's sitting, one and two is standing, but one will be continuous, so it'll be like a loop. So if we put this to, or sorry, zero. Put this out with three. This one should just be continuous. So yeah. Right, but what I also wanted to add was a randomizer. So I was telling you between 0, 1 and 2, it's all different. They're different animations, but they're basically the same thing, just sitting down and clapping. All we need to do is make this to 0, make this to 1, and now this should have all, so between, so if you go to 0 now, it'll just pick a random one from all three animations. As you can see, some are sitting down. Some are standing up, and the ones that, because there's more stand, two more stand, two standing up animations, and one sitting, more people are likely to be standing. But you'll see some of the standing finish their animation, like this one at the back. But some of them just keep going because they're doing the loop, and they're all doing their different animations. So this one, if the mix animation is good if you want a variety. Now, if we quickly go into fans, uh, fan models, and this is vertex base. Now in this you can see here, animation 1 to 3, now what this does is this takes in animation 1 to 3, switches it based on the float number, so between 0 and 3, and random based on the parents that's random, it will pick a random animation and send it through here. So basically animation 1 is based off the first three animations, animation 2 I think they are a celebration animation, so one sitting again, two standing, and Another, there's another three, which is this three. These are an idol animation, so different idols. You know, one, I think two are sitting here and one standing. I think the standing one's at the top. So again, it'll pick random one. So if you want it to play a celebration at one, it'll, you put number two. If it was on the mix one, mix animations, it's true. So there you go, you kind of get the gist of it. And for the rest of them, based on this, because I've done this, use this switch one here. If you use any number between 6 and 12, or 5 and 11, sorry, it'll just output the, this last animation here. Now, that's it for this video, but in the next video, I will be showing you how to make your own characters and import them and make them play the same animation sort of thing, and also to import your own chair models if you'd like. So, thank you very much for watching, and hope you have a good day. And yeah, see you in the next video.